Okay, welcome back to creating a cryptocurrency in Python. In the last video, we started to set up our blockchain, created some methods in our SQL helpers file for getting the blockchain and syncing it with the MySQL database. So in this one, we're going to send money using our blockchain. And we'll do that by creating a method in our file here and we'll call it send money. So if we send money, we need to know who it's from. So let's call that the sender. And then we need to know who it's going to, the recipient. And then we also need some amount that is being sent. Now, this is a bit complex because we, we have to check a lot of things with this method. Is the sender uh, or is the recipient a real user? Is the amount a, a, a good value? Is that amount, uh, enough? does the user have enough to send that amount? So we're going to try and see first, is that amount even a number in the first place? Did the user try and send some string? So let's try to say amount is equal to a float of the amount. And if it's not, we will accept a value error. And then we'll raise a new error and let's call that error an invalid transaction error. So let's define our own error and errors, and we'll do that at the top here. We'll say class um, invalid transaction exception, and that will take in the parameter exception, and then we will just pass. And then let's also create one for insufficient funds if the user does not have enough money to send the amount they have requested. That will also take in the parameter exception, and then we will pass. So let's copy this, and we will raise an invalid transaction exception, and we will say invalid transaction, because the user has tried to send a string, and that's not valid. And my indenting is a little bit weird here, so I'll save that. Now we know our amount is an actual number. So now let's see if the user has enough money to send it in the first place. Now, how are we gonna keep track of the balance? As I mentioned in the last video, we could use the data in our blockchain. So I'll give you an example here. Say this is our blockchain here. This isn't actually what it should look like. So don't worry at this point. We have something like this in our data of the blockchain. So we have kind of like a history of transactions. So the bank has sent Will, 100 units then will has sent john doe 20 units then john doe has sent will 10. so the way we can get our balances is we can loop through all of this data and we can if let's say we're looking for will's balance if i'm in the right place here on the right side of there that means i'm receiving money so then we can say my balance is zero plus 100. Then if I'm on the left side, I'm losing money. So we can say my balance equals 100 minus 20, then, which is 80. Now we go here, plus 10 is 90, then plus 50, we have 140, then 190, then I'm sending 90, so now I have 100. So if you see, that's how we can actually get our balance. So let's, get, let's make a method to get the balance of the user. So let's define get underscore balance. Username will be our parameter. And then we will assume a balance of zero at the start before we loop through the entire blockchain. Now we're going to use our get blockchain method to get the most recent blockchain. Then we're gonna loop through each block in that blockchain. We're going to split the data into a list based off of the arrows. So data equals block dot data dot split at the arrow. And then we're going to see if the username is the first um, item in that list. So if the username is the first item in that list, that means they've sent money and they are losing money. So if username is at data of zero, then we know we can subtract a float of data at two, which is the amount. And then if the username is in the second position or data of one, then we know that they're receiving money. So we can do balance plus equals the float of data at two. And now we should have our balance and we can return that like so. 
So now in our send money, we want to see if the user has enough money to send it in the first place. So we're going to check if amount is greater than the balance of the sender. And we also want to make sure that the sender is not the bank, because if the bank is sending you money, we'll make it kind of like the bank has an infinite money for this. So we'll say and sender is uh, not equal to the bank. And we'll use the whole bank concept later. So we'll raise an, an insuffi insufficient funds error in this case, and we'll say insufficient funds because the user doesn't have enough money here to send what they're requesting to. Then we're going to check if the sender is equal to the recipient. So let's say someone tried to send themselves money. That wouldn't make any sense. So let's say if sender is equal to recipient. And then another thing that wouldn't make sense is if they tried to send negative money, basically take money out of the user's account. So let's say or amount and we'll do it for zero too, because it doesn't really make sense to send zero. So we'll say or amount is less than or equal to zero. And then in that case, we'll raise an invalid transaction exception, saying invalid transaction. And then we will also need to make sure that the user or the recipient indeed exists. So we will say if is new user, because if this is a new user, then they don't exist. Then we can also raise an invalid transaction exception and say user does not exist like that. Okay, now we've gone through all of our error checking and our transaction should be good to go if we have passed all of these checkpoints. So now at this point, we will get our current blockchain so we can add a new transaction to it. We will get the number of the next block in the chain, which should be equal to the length of the blockchain plus one. Then we will create the data which we are adding, which will be equal to that three arrow style I showed you earlier. So this will be the sender, um, the recipient, and the amount. So we will say percent sender, recipient, um, amount. And then we will do blockchain.mine, a new block with the number that we just generated and the data, which will be equal to this data here. Then we will sync our blockchain into the MySQL like that. And that should be it. We're going to test this now by calling send underscore money, and we're going to send money from the bank so that we don't get the insufficient funds error. So let's do that here. We'll call send underscore money from the bank to, we'll say will sub because that user exists and we'll send a hundred units. So let's refresh. Okay, and we've clearly come across some sort of error. We have some unexpected indent. I think I fixed that, yes. We'll refresh. Blockchain has no length. Okay. Um, um, I think I have to call the length of the blockchain dot chain because an instance has no length. It's the list that has the length. Okay, and let's see if that worked. It did. So we have a new block in our chain, and the data says that the bank sent Will 100. Perfect. Now let's try and send money from Will to another user. So let's send from Will to John Doe. And let's test our method. So let's first try and send a value that is not a string. So let's try and send a string of hello. We can't send hello dollars. So let's see what happens when we do that. Perfect, we have an invalid transaction exception. Awesome. Now, another thing we could try and do is send negative money. Let's try and send negative 100. And we have an invalid transaction exception. Again, perfect. 
Now let's try and send more money than Will has because Will right now has a hundred. Let's try and send 101. And you see, we get our insufficient funds exception exactly as we would have expected. Now let's try and send an actual amount. Let's try and send, um, I don't know, 20. And we have no errors. And if we reload our blockchain, we will have a new block that says we'll send John Doe 20. And that's exactly what we wanted. Perfect. So now we've created all of our methods. And in the next video, we can do the fun part and we can go into our app.py file and create the pages to send money. So we can do this from our web design and not just internally like this. So I'll see you then.